puppy now, and he'll go up to um, my German Shepherd, Maya, she's a very strong dog, and he'll go up and play with it, and she'll just muzzle punch him and growl and pin him down. <laughs> but never hurts him. It never hurts. Never hurts. It's just establishing. Establish boundaries. So if the dog was in the wild and was raised by dogs, if he did something, he'd grab by the scruff of his neck and be put on the ground. He would never get hurt because he's a puppy. Like even a, 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 a stupid dog wouldn't hurt a puppy because they know it's a puppy. So I don't believe in giving dogs too much freedom because it just sets them up for this path of failure. You know, I think they just start to learn. Well, I can growl at the, at the older dog because I'm a puppy, right. and then suddenly they're 12 months old and they're growling at the neighbor's Rottweiler, and the Rottweiler takes a chunk out of them. I can confirm this. I always, I always say that I, I started out as a, uh, a great dog lover, mm -hmm. bad dog owner. I see what you mean, yeah, totally. Um, and, and so these two were great. Bunny and Teddy were great, but I got a, I got a boy, um, an Akita, mm -hmm. um, which I didn't. And again, I, I, I agree that you need to understand the breeds totally. before you get them. Totally. Um, and I didn't understand Akitas, and I didn't mix him with others from mm -hmm. the start. And I didn't discipline him from others from the start. Right. And so it set me up. Yep. Um, I'm extremely responsible, and I made the promise that it's my dog, right. so I stayed with it. Yeah. Um, but I wish I learned more before doing it. Because yeah. it set me up to that I couldn't take him to dog parks. Right. I couldn't have him around other dogs. Because mm -hmm. he was so protective about the family. Right. And the family was his. And that right. was it. Right. So um, I agree with you. Yeah. I should have. Because I always I was like this person. I'm just telling you guys out there. And I know, I know you don't want to be that. You're, you're not being an abusive person. I don't want you to be an abusive person to the dogs. I just want you to be disciplined with Correct. them. Correct. And, 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 I, and I looked at it as a bad thing. I don't right. want to discipline them. No, right. no, no. And I should have. Right. I should have been, okay, I'm in charge. You got to do what I ask yeah. you to do. Um, and I wish I did that with him, but I've learned that mistake. Yeah. And the, you know, the advantage you've got is you've got a strong yeah. energy. You know what I mean? And <laughs> she's that's... like, oh, honey. Ooh. She wants to close yeah, up? She's off. <laughs> All right, baby. There she goes. Because dogs pick up on energy, right? So that mm -hmm. the one thing people don't, no, a lot of times you'll have, man or woman, if they're a weaker energy, then the dog needs to protect that. So even if you were weak with your dog, you're still a strong energy, so the dog still senses some confidence there. The problem you have a lot of times, you have these people who will go get a pit bull, that's the big big trigger word now, right? Everybody right. wants, you know, there's, there's, people, there's nobody in the middle on pit bulls except for me. <laughs> Everybody says they're the greatest dogs you should have them, or they're the worst dogs nobody should have them. There's no great dog. I don't think any dog, I always say the best dog is a dog like Teddy. Because she's, we know her, right? I don't know a three-year-old dog. I don't know the before and the after. I don't know where they're going. They could maim a child or something. But Teddy's got the perfect life, right? So without having the structure in there, you're setting the dog up for failure. The dog, the more the dog loves you. I so you, agree with that. Right? So the more the dog loves you, the more the dog seeks to protect you. Right. So when I taught karate to kids, I always started with love and went to respect. With dogs, I start with respect and go to love. They learn things, they, they're the same things, but they learn them in different, through different phases. So with a dog, you don't want to start with love. You know, My girlfriend, um, we, we got this lab who's, you know, he's a, he's a puppy. He's kind of an asshole. In the labs. You know? And it's a total, total schmuck, you know? So <laughs> Goofy. every once in a while, you know, I give him a correction. She goes, why did you correct him? I said, you know how I learned how to, um, uh, how to, block a kick to my head and she said how oh. I said by getting kicked in the head right and that's something that people don't understand what's a correction so I understand well correction it's a great question because people always think a correction is a punishment mm -hmm. so when I, when I lecture I always say there's a huge difference between correcting a behavior and punishing a behavior I'll give you a great example the dog is going to take a pee on my carpet okay a punishment is I take her, the nose of the dog and I shove it in the pee and I go, no, do that, I don't know. I smack right. the dog and beat him around, right. right? A correction is I see them starting to pee and I grab them and I go, no, 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 no. And I take them outside and they pee outside. And after they pee, I give them a bunch of treats and I praise them. I go, what a good boy. Huge difference. Huge difference, Huge right? difference. The dog marks. We all learn. Dogs learn through success. We learn through failure, right? We learn, oh, man, that didn't work. I got to try something else. The dog doesn't, it doesn't happen or the dog fails. He goes, I don't want to try that again. Uh, very interesting, right? So very, I can very well put too. So I can find a dog in a small area. When I first get a dog home, they go in a crate, right? And then the next thing they get a room. Then they get two rooms. Then they get a house. 
other people bring a dog home, they give them the house. Yeah. Then they take them into two rooms, then they take them into one room, and they take them. So you've just completely wow. immortalized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, right. and, and you know, I just want to confirm this mm -hmm. that, that I did the same thing. I didn't create Elvis, where I did create crate um, my other puppies. Mm -hmm. And not only do they love the crate, which love I it. hated at first, right. um, but it, it showed that they, they had a security place to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I opened the house a little bit. Right. I didn't know this. Right. Again, I, as, as a dog person, I, I, I went and through trial and error. Sure. And I made mistakes early on. Finish the three questions. What were the three questions? Your best tips. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, the best tips is, is structure. Okay. Um, fair corrections and, and, and I establish what fair corrections is. fair right. correction yeah everything a correction should move the dog from an incorrect behavior to a place where I can reward them okay I'm gonna ask a harsh question yeah um, don't know the answer to this for you, from you um, I have my opinion do you ever hit a dog no I'll tell you why because hitting a dog is, is not a fair interaction with them, right? So, so no all, spank on the ass, no spank on the nose. I don't believe in it. No, I, I, I no, agree. No. I'll tell you why. The dog should receive anything negative from you when it's away from you. So if I want to teach a dog how to walk on a leash, I'm going to put him on a 12-foot leash, and I'm going to correct and, and pop, pop, pop the dog when he's away from me. What does that teach the dog? Well, I don't want to be there. I'll try being over here. People constantly put a dog on a leash and it's next to when they're yanking the dog. Yeah. The dog has no choice. The dog fight lives in two in two states and that's fight or flight, just like we do. Right. Right. So if I'm here with you and you're doing this to me, I'm like, I'll go over here. Right. And you're working the dog further away from you. So I don't ever want to. And again, hitting a dog is punishment, right? But if I block so you go them, straight to that. Yeah. So I mean, I'll grab a dog by the scruff of the neck and grab him and hold him and tell him knock it off. But dogs communicate through body language, so we have to be fair in that. Dogs are not verbal and they're not tactile as far as grabbing things except with their mouth. So when we start doing things like that, you'll always see people who correct their dogs incorrectly or punish their dogs. They have dogs that when I do this, they go, whoa. If I do this, I, I do that too, but I'm the youngest of yep. uh, yeah, yeah, but, So I'm a flincher. <laughs> I only do my around. <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, you want the dog to want to be with you. So you encourage the dog to do the right behavior after they do the wrong behavior. You know? And it's, it's super easy to do. You just have to kind of think outside the box. And it, I think it makes you a better person to, to, to get that. that. And patience. Um, I always heard that if you're going to teach them something, mm -hmm. a dog, make sure you have the time to do it because when you start to teach them, finish the, teach, the lesson. Mm -hmm. Don't just go halfway, oh, he's not getting it, and yeah. walk away. Right. Confuses them. Yeah, so with dogs, again, like I said, we learn through failure, right? Like you could, you, when you talk about working out, you're saying go to failure, right? So you can't do another rep, but your body will recover from that as will your mind, so you can want to do more. A dog, once they're crushed, they don't want to get back out of the crate. So what I do with a dog is I keep training very short. I never would train a dog for more than 10, 15 minutes at a time. And I stop when they're in the best place. So if I have two dogs, I'm introducing them, and I don't know, the minute they're bouncing and playing, I take them apart. So what do they do? Next time they come out of the crate or the car or whatever, they go, well, last time I was here, this was great. Let's this is pick awesome. It, pick it up where we left off. Wow. So when dogs fight, and I've dealt with a lot of aggressive dogs, as soon as the dogs fight, people separate them, and then they call me. And I said, what'd you do? And they said, well, I separate them. I said, that's the worst thing you could do. The last memory I saw you, you were kicking my ass. Right. So I'm gonna pick it up you know, where we start, where we left off. No, if you're fighting, we solve the problem, we correct, 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 until you're, all right, fine, I can accept yeah. you being there. Right. Now I'll take you apart. Next time I bring you back together, they say, well, last time we ended it here. I'm, I'm kind of cool here. Okay. I love how you, you simplify this stuff. Uh, and, and again, I think when somebody really knows their stuff, they can explain this to a six-year-old. Right. And, and, and you do that. This is not complicated. It's like weightlifting. It's not complicated. Mm -hmm. um, and so everything you said, first of all, confirms my beliefs on how bad of a dog uh, father I was uh, and how much better I am now. I wouldn't say bad. I would say you were uninformed, right? Because what, right. You, where you were uninformed allowed you to grow into the person you are now, which is an overly loving, caring person about dogs. I was young when I got uh, uh, my husky, and 
you know, that was nine years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 300 year old guy, so that's young <laughs> to me. So um, I did not know that Huskies are unreliable, even if well trained, off leash. Totally unreliable. And I and I tell everybody that, and I travel the nation with Striker, mm -hmm. and and you, I get people every day. My gosh, she's the greatest dog because yeah. they don't even know she's on the plane or right. wherever. I'm gonna get a husky, and I just say to them, Tell them, out of all the dogs that I know of, they're the worst family dog. <laughs> now I love them, yeah, yeah, and I can handle them, sure. But I want them to understand fully what they're right. getting into because right. I know they're pretty. The blue eyes, it gets them, but they're terrible because if you got a front door, somehow they're gonna find it. Yeah, for sure. And uh, they're gonna run away. So my point is that huskies run away, and I've never met a husky owner that hasn't lost their husky. Yeah, hundred percent. And again, like you said. It's what's, they're the closest thing to a wolf. Mm -hmm. and, and their yeah. whole thing is about yeah. venture. Very feral, yeah, the, the, that's their tendencies. And that's with any breed. I've got a Malinois and a working line German Shepherd. People go, oh, I want to get a Malinois. I say, whatever you do, don't get that dog. <laughs> just get some mud at the shelter who just wants to sit on the couch and watch Oprah. Because that's easy, right? If you have a dog <laughs> that you need to work, it's fun for the first few months. And then you're like, I can't keep doing this. Yeah. And don't get the dog for today, get the dog for its 12th year. You know, Honestly, I love that. You know, that's what you got to think about. You can't think about today. You gotta that's my about. philosophy on training. Okay. Don't try to be a superhero today. Think about in 10 years, I want you to be better then than you are now. But take your time with it. And so I'm just saying that, that I love that concept. Mm -hmm. Nobody thinks that way. That when they get the dog, it's yeah. like, that's the, I want that and I want the puppy. Yep. Yeah. But in five years, I'm getting married, I'm gonna move away, and then I'm gonna get rid of the dog. Yeah, 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 we're having a kid. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just horrible. All right, so I got my last question here. Okay. Because people ask me this, and they, and, and, and they, I was on a podcast today, and they said, so what's with you and dogs and stuff? And, and for me, uh, starting, Bunny and Teddy were my first adult dogs. And it was, um, I couldn't say, I couldn't be with these two dogs for eight hours, knowing that, then they're going to go back to the pound when I can sure. have a shelter. So it just started out with something like that. Right. But then it became a responsibility. Then it became something that I am terrible at. There's one thing that I, I still work on every single day, and that is living in the moment. Uh -huh. I cannot. Right. It, it is, I don't care. It, it, I always tell the story about when I won the universe, uh, I got backstage after winning, and I had this new TV show that's going on the air, and everything's kicking, and I'm sitting there just winning the universe going, What's next? What's next? <laughs> right. Wait a minute, right. you just three minutes ago won the universe and I'm already into the next thing. Yeah. That's something I've always dealt with throughout my whole yeah. career. It's just yeah. what's next, what's next, yeah. what's next? I, and I never celebrate it. With dogs, no stress in the world, no nothing. I can sit there and I forget everything. Yeah. And I'm just living yeah. and breathing in Teddy's moment and her energy yeah. and, and, and being there. Yeah. Um, for me, that's one of the biggest things. Yeah. Uh, what is it for you? about dogs I, I can mirror exactly what you said because through you know being a martial artist as you are you're in the moment when you're fighting but when you're not in the moment of doing things it's when you have that idle time that you start to worry about the past or for, worry about the future and I do the same thing right what I find in dogs and I love all animals I mean you've seen my African photography like I've been there animals to me really represent the spirit of call it whatever you want God Great creator, the universe, or whatever, because they don't have those crazy perceptions that drive us bad. Like, am I going to be broke tomorrow? Am I going to be hungry tomorrow? You know, I've been completely broke stealing food in grocery stores, and I've been in the best places in the world. But dogs don't care, and dogs don't care where you are. If you're living in your car, Teddy's going to love you as much as if you're living in Bel Air and you know in a mansion. Yeah, me cry now. But that is true. No, it's a hundred percent true. Though. And you'll never find a friend like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's to me. The purest thing in life is the love you get from an animal, especially a dog, because we've co-evolved with them for tens of thousands of years. There's nothing like it. If you've never had a dog, you've never loved or been loved by a dog, you've never lived. You've got to keep coming back to this life and make that lesson over and over. I love it. Thanks yeah. for hanging out today. Thanks, brother. It's my pleasure to be here. Man, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. Robert, I'm going to give you guys all the information so you guys can follow Robert. Um, and he's over at Gold's Gym doing his things. And, and again, thank you from both Mona and me and Teddy. Thank you. And yeah. Stryker is so jealous today. <laughs> you should, you guys, if you saw Stryker, I've never seen a dog get jealous. And he just said they don't do that. So she's jealous right now. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you.